That's why a lot of the investors this morning and after the report came out last night are saying this is a great buying opportunity. If you had done that in the past with Amazon, the returns would have paid off. 60 Ultimate times forward, though. Well, let's, the valuation remains one of the big questions here when you look at this compared to the other companies it's competing with. But when you look at these sales numbers, $63.4 billion in revenues. Now, that was 20% growth on year on year. There had been some concern about Amazon sales growth after last quarter, and it looked like it rebounded on that front. But what the key concern here was this profit streak that it had kept going over the past four quarters, that ending with the EPS below estimates last night, 522 versus 557. The other metric we, we always watch with Amazon is this AWS number. And essentially, we saw a slowdown in revenue for AWS. Revenue growth growing 37%. So bear in mind, that's a slowdown. But it had been above 40% every time that Amazon had reported this metric since 2014. So that's a number that analysts are looking at closely and saying, look, that's Amazon's high margin business. If we're seeing a slowdown in AWS, is it going to be able to keep up with these additional costs, with shipping, with the other investments that it's making across the business? One thing that I thought was interesting from the earnings call is that when, when they were asked about whether or not their guidance in the future takes into account any potential uh, <coughs> penalties on back of regulation and this new investigation out of the <coughs> Department of Justice into social media practices, uh, they didn't really comment on the matter. So that is certainly something that could weigh on investors' minds as you look forward to Amazon's potential going forward. They haven't addressed this regulatory concern head on. Amazon has been notoriously quiet on this concern, more so than maybe the other FANG companies out there on this, but it insists that it is not the same type of threat as perhaps some of the other internet companies because it's not dominant in the retail market. There are still a lot of competitors in brick and mortar and even in online sales, although we've seen that it's growing share of e-commerce certainly in the U.S., and that is why it looks like it's a target of this recent DOJ review. Well, apparently out of uh, all e-commerce that's done in the U.S., Amazon captures about 38 to 40 percent yeah. of that. So it is, it, it is a decent share. But if you look at it on a global scale, perhaps right. they, their share is a little bit smaller. But when it does come to competition, I thought it was interesting as well, their heavy investment in that one day shipping. And obviously they came out with that very big initiative, but they've got competition in that space and Walmart rolled out their own version. So if Amazon, uh, who are the leader when it comes to logistics and delivery, are saying, look, it's really costing us and it's eating into our margins, it's eating into our bottom line, what does that mean for the other big retailers who are actually trying to get on the bandwagon as well? Certainly tough to compete with a company that has this much cash, you know, a trillion dollar company, at least close in market cap. But what we're talking about with the one day shipping is really interesting because they had come out and said this is going to cost them $800 million in the second quarter to make this happen. And ultimately they've said now the costs are a little bit higher. So that is what is accounting for a little bit of the weakness in the share price too is how much higher are these costs exactly? And, and if, if we are going to be making these types of investments and, and you know we saw Jeff Bezos in the release say it's going to pay off, you know. How do you know that's the case? Steve Mnuchin on Wednesday, and we talked about regulators briefly there, uh, said uh, Amazon had destroyed the retail industry. And, and I think that's a real great A-level question for all of us. Did Amazon destroy the retail industry? Has it? And I think the obvious glib answer is yes. But was it them or was it the rest of us? Was it, is that just the gun in our hand? I'm not being funny. Uh, is it us who decided we wanted to have everything immediately? Was it us who decided we wanted it cheap? We couldn't be bothered to get into our SUV and stroll down to the, the mall or the high street or main street as well? Or was it regulation? Was it the governments that did it by extracting too much uh, in local and uh, state taxation? Was it uh, also the landlords who charged too much for the retail industry? To so uh, to, it's very glib to say Amazon destroyed the retail industry when I think we can all look in the mirror, can't we? It is. I mean, we cannot fall victim to that if you just look at Prime Day. I mean, they, they, a lot of the reason for the guidance next quarter is because mm -hmm. there were good Prime Day numbers. And this is a, a day that Amazon has made up and millions of customers have fallen into it and said, yes, I do want a deal on this and I want next day shipping on it. So I think that the argument that Amazon makes as far as does, did it destroy the retail market, it says, we, a big part of our business continues to remain these third party sellers and we're helping them mm. boost their sales. We are, uh, you know, bringing them to the marketplace. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.